Hey guys, welcome back to another interesting topic. Today's topic is on dual edge trigger flip flop. So before we go into the topic, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on. And if you have any doubts, comment down below. I'll respond within 24 hours. Dual edge trigger flip flop is a sequential circuit which samples the data at both edges, positive edge and negative edge. It is used in applications where throughput is very high. DDR is one such example. To meet the functionality of dual edge trigger flip flop, let's design a basic circuit with the flops and the combinational logic known to us. So this is the basic design. We have two flops. One flop is negative edge triggered and another flop is positive edge trigger. Both outputs are connected to the MUX and we have a select line which is connected to the clock. Whenever the clock is high, then we will get the output from the positive edge trigger flip-flop and whenever the clock is low, we will get the output from the negative edge trigger flip-flop. On paper, it's perfectly fine, no problem with it. This meets the functionality of dual edge trigger flip-flop. So this is the basic design of dual edge trigger flip-flop where data is sampled at positive edge and at negative edge but there is problem in the circuit. If you can observe the clock, the clock is going to the data path of multiplexer. So we don't want the clock to be in data path. So this is the biggest problem. Clock in data path will cause a lot of problems while doing clock tree synthesis and while analyzing the timing reports in synthesis. So this is the limitation of this circuit. So to overcome this problem, Ralph Hildebrand has given a cool circuit and let's look at that circuit and analyze it. So this is the circuit of Ralph. Here we are not using the clock in data path. We are using the output of flip flops and feeding it back to the input and the output of the flops are XOR. And Q will be the output where data is sampled at positive edge and negative edge. So here the multiplexer can be replaced with the XOR gates. And I have taken the output of negative edge trigger flip-flop as N and the output of positive edge trigger flip-flop as P. So this is dual edge trigger flip-flop circuit. So let's analyze this circuit for better understanding using waveforms. So I have drawn the circuit on paper and as you can see, I have not shown the feedback connections. So P is over here and P is over here. And N is over here and N is over here. So now let's go into waveforms and see how the circuit functions. So this is a clock. As you can see, we have positive edge and negative edge, positive edge and negative edge shown. Now let's give input D to this circuit. So I'm giving this input for the circuit. So this is the input which will be checking the functionality of dual edge trigger flip-flop. We have D high over here and going down at this negative edge and going high at this positive edge and going down at this negative edge. I am assuming that P and N are zero at the beginning. So as you can see P and N are zero. So let's take this pause edge. N is zero, D is one. So the output of XOR gate will be one. So the one will be going through the pause to edge flip flop and P will become one. So P will become one at this pause edge. So let's check at the next neg edge, what's happening. At this neg edge, P is one and D is also one. So when both the inputs are one, the XOR gate will give zero to the negative edge trigger flip-flop and n will be zero. At pause edge, you can see that p will be still high because n is zero and d is one. So this will continue. And if you analyze at this neg edge, so here d is zero and p is one. So when this happens, XOR will give the output as one. So the output of XOR gate is one and which will be passed through the negative edge trigger flip-flop so n will be 1. So n will be 1 from this neg edge. So as we continue 
you can analyze at each and every edge it will be similar so when we reach this point where d is 1 once again at the pause edge so d is 1 and n is 1 so the output of XOR gate will be 0 and since it's happening at the pause edge p will become 0 at this pause edge so p has become 0 so let's analyze at this neg edge where d is 0 and p is 0 so the XOR output will be 0 and which will be given as input for the negative edge triggered flip-flop so the output will be n equals to 0. So we got p and n. For getting the output all we need to do is to XOR p and n. So when p is high and n is 0 it will be 1 and at this point when both are high q will be 0 and when p is 0 and n is 1 again q will be high so this is our output. So as you can see that data is being sampled at both edges positive edge and negative edge and we are getting our data output. This is the waveforms generated through IKRS Verilog and if you want to know how to create waves or run simulations you can check the IKRS Verilog and it's shown in the card. So this is how dual edge trigger flip-flop is represented. So now let's discuss about coding. So we cannot use positive of clock and negative of clock in a single sensitivity list of always block because that is not synthesizable. So please, please avoid it for dual edge triggered flip-flop. And instead you can use this code. This is how you can write the code for dual edge triggered flip-flop. Dual edge triggered flip-flop guarantees glitchless operation. Since output XOR element has no more than single input transition on each state change. So this will provide the output glitchless. Okay. This is one important point about dual edge trigger flip-flop. So please comment down below the topic you want to learn. Thanks for watching till end. Hope you have a great day and great health and have no fear. Be brave.